Hello everybody and welcome to the Voyages in Time channel or Conquering History Games if you are coming from my gaming channel. I hope you guys can hear me because um, I'm uh, talking from behind a uh, some cloth covering my face. Uh, but uh, today I'm going to be doing something that I've talked about on my gaming channel uh, doing for a while. That being um, a bookshelf tour. So uh, this is where I keep most of my books, uh, which is what I'm showing right now. Right here, this is not all the books. I'm also going to show you guys some stuff uh, that are in two other rooms. Um, but I thought I'd give you like a wide shot of it before we go in and uh, start breaking things down by shelf and section. I'll try to remember to timestamp because uh, I anticipate this video might be fairly long. Uh, now, I'm not going to talk about every single book uh, on my shelf. I will, like, you know, point them out. And uh, I would really, really love in the comments if you guys would tell me um, which books you would like me to do an individual video on. Because I think that could be a fun series to do. Um, and, uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's hop into it. And if you enjoy this video, please... Help me get towards uh, where I can uh, monetize the channel, so I'll have access. Mostly, I want it because I want access to the community posts. Um, so we got to get to those 1,000 subscribers. Um, so anyway, it's gonna be a cut. Okay, so here we are in the top shelf of the um, uh, right of the two main bookshelves that you saw. By the way, if anyone wants to know what bookshelves those are, these are act. I I actually got these shelves, and there's two others I have, but that they're too big to uh, fit in my apartment, so I keep them actually at my parents. Uh, and I got them for thirty bucks when a video rental place was going out of business. So um, these books originally were basically meant to house DVDs and VHSs and stuff like that. Uh, and also, if there's any cuts, it's because I had to go drink water because I'm just completely covered head to toe because I'm afraid of a reflection showing them who I am, and uh, I do enjoy my anonymity. Anyway, uh, French Revolution section here. So we've got uh, The Coming of the French Revolution by Georges Lefebvre, uh, which is, uh, now the French Revolution is, of course, a really controversial uh, subject. You're going to be seeing a lot of different books over the course of uh, this tour. You're going to go like, wait, some of this stuff contradicts the other stuff. Like, you know, I, 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 I consider it, you know, I'm studying history here. I got to look at the different points of view. Um... So, uh, yeah, you got to look at different people's opinions. Uh, so that's why you're going to probably see some contradictory stuff over the course of this. Now, I, I bring this up with Lefebvre because Lefebvre is known as a leftist. But his coming of the French Revolution, also known as um, 1989, excuse me, 1789, is very well organized and praised kind of universally. So I would suggest at least seeing that one. I was also able to get my hands on a set of his two books on the French Revolution and his two books on the Napoleonic era. Or maybe this is all the... French Revolution? Huh. Interesting question. Uh, I actually have dust jackets for three of these, and they are nice, but I don't have one for the last one here of Napoleon. So I just took them all off because it was bothering me that one didn't have the dust jacket. So I'm keeping an eye out for if I can find that one somewhere. Okay. N and now, up here, we've just got, like, kind of a timeline of European history in the first half of the 19th century. Uh, like, you know, with some commentary. This is the French Revolution for Beginners. This is like a series of books that are actually pretty interesting and go into a lot of detail considering they're supposed to be for beginners. We've got uh, Edmunds Burke's Reflections on the Revolution in France. Oxford History of the French Revolution. By the way, one of the things I love that will almost always get me to, one of the reasons I get love so many French Revolutionary books, is I love to see when different writers... Um, or print publishers and whatnot uh, determine when the French Revolution ends. So, for example, Lefebvre here, you know, he he's stopping at 1799, but like the the French Revolution, I think the Oxford History stops at 1802. Was that a different book? But yeah, yeah. So like so, some different people have different interpretations of when the French Revolution ends, and I find that really interesting to see those arguments. So uh, okay. Anyway, this is a Robespierre reader. It's a lot of his speeches, and it has an intro by the, the epic meme philosopher uh, Zizek. Uh, there is Michelet's History of the French Revolution. He's a fairly famous uh, French historian. We've got the Twelve Who Ruled, which is about the Committee of Public Safety. Then there's the uh, biography of the 
uh, uh, the dubious, uh, uh, infamous Talleyrand uh, there. Then we got the first of what we're going to see is several Bedford series readers here. So these are basically a book series where um, an author who's an expert in the subject will write an introduction explaining a subject and then follow it up with uh, several primary sources on the era or the event or the person or whatever and to provide commentary on those primary sources. They're really good bang for your buck in my experience in terms of learning about an era. So we have The French Revolution and Human Rights here by Lynn Hunt, who we're going to see again later. Then next to it, we've got, uh, oops, on, ah, oh goodness, okay, hold on. Okay, we're back. So this is a series on uh, Slave Revolution in the Caribbean. This is, of course, the Haitian Revolution. This is unfortunately the only book I have directly on the Haitian Revolution. But Black Spartacus is supposed to be getting a reprint, so uh, hopefully that's going to drive down some prices and you know trickle down to the thrift stores and I can grab one. Uh, that also leads into another Bedford series, the one on Napoleon, symbol of an age. Um, okay, we've got, uh, this is the screenplay for, or I guess, not really screenplay, it was a play first, but uh, yeah, this is the script for Marat Saad, which is a really interesting um, play set during the French Revolution, or I should say after it, maybe. Um, the end of the beginning. This is about the 1968 stuff that was going on in France. It's also a very strangely written book. Uh, next up is The Invention of Human Rights. That's by Lynn Hunt as well. And then The Burden of Responsibility. This is like a French history thing. It's kind of complicated. I don't want to go into it, but I just have it here because it's next to the French stuff. Okay. So then we go into the space age with Man on the Moon and Space Race, which are about uh, the Apollo programs. And uh, Space Race specifically focuses a lot on the Soviet side. Uh, well, not a lot on the Soviet side, but it kind of compares the two sides. Man on the Moon is really interesting because it's very personal to the astronauts. I think every single astronaut who went to space got interviewed for this. I think, wait, I think maybe one didn't. Um, uh, you know, who was who was living at the time that uh, this this book was being worked on. And then we've got um, The Future of Humanity, which is um, by Kaku, who if I show you his face, you're going to recognize him. There he is. Yeah, he does a lot of TV shows and stuff. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the space. And yeah, so this is just about, like it says, The Future of Humanity, how like we're going to one day um, be turned into lasers and shoot around in space and stuff. It's going to be interesting stuff. Okay, so now... We go into the Spain section. Uh, now, a lot of the organization of my shelves, you got to understand, is determined by um, book height. So that's why things are not always necessarily in chronological order. Okay, Spain time. Cameras cooperating. So I have a lot of stuff here on Spain and the Spanish Civil War. Um, but not, not any Paul Preston. I'm probably going to get some next month, though, when I do a big spending spree on books before the end of the year. So, uh, we've got here Homage to Catalonia, which is a classic. It's by George Orwell, who I'm sure you all know. It's about his experience in the Spanish Civil War. We've got A Concise History of Spain, Ornament of the World, which is um, kind of about Andalusia and kind of the peak of um, Islamic Spanish culture um, during the, the medieval age. Uh, and how it rose and fell and stuff like that. Really interesting book. Uh, Lieutenant Nun is a memoir of a, a Spanish woman who uh, dressed up as a man and went to the New World. Extremely interesting. Concise history. Or, like, this is, this is one of those, like, Oxford... Or, excuse me. I'm trying to get in there. Yeah, so this is part of a series of these, like, a little Oxford um, books where they uh they try to give a little introduction to the subject it's actually really in depth though for how small it is so like for comparison right next to it we've got this book by adam hawkschild which um is uh about the spanish civil war and as you can see it's not only taller it's much thicker and this is definitely the better book of the two although this one has some interesting stuff about america well like kind of the premise of it is that it's following the uh americans who went to go fight in the uh spanish civil war and telling their story um then we've got J G giles um truman's here uh Tre tremant i'm not i'm not actually sure how to pronounce his name but his uh his ghosts of Spain is kind of the post-Franco era 
Uh, he lives there, and it's him writing about it, and we're going to see him again later on. Okay, continuing. We're now on the second bookshelf, uh, some of the Spain stuff. Um, gosh, my glasses are getting all fogged up. Um, we've got History of Medieval Spain, uh, what it says on the tin. Medieval Iberia, this is a primary source reader, second edition. Um, so this covers essentially the buildup, uh, the period during, and what leads to the end of uh, um, the, the, uh, the Islamic invasion of Spain, uh, and sort of just the interactions between them, the Christians, and the Jews uh, over the course of medieval Liberia, because that relationship between those three religions is what defines it. Handless Maiden is about the experiences of uh, Muslims who converted. This is just a little marker I have here to remind me because I lost it to uh, at some point pick up another copy of uh, El Cid, uh, specifically the bilingual edition. Um, it's a, yeah, the, the famous poem. Then we go, okay, so now we're in medieval stuff here. So we've got another primary source reader of... Um, uh, Mid yeah, uh, medieval Russia source book. There's the medieval crown of Aragon. Oxford history of medieval Europe, which is great for when you have insomnia. Tucked in here in the medieval section, we've got the prints and selected discourses from Machiavelli. Switzerland by Siegfried. This uh, this was a book that actually used to be owned by uh, a professor of mine. He's got he's signed the inside of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, not that like I asked for his autograph, but when I found it, because uh, because the uh, the university was doing a sale of books from its library, I opened it up and his uh, signature and the date was on uh, on the day he signed it was uh, on the inside. So that was really cool. So this is pretty special to me. I got a couple other books from him as well. All right, this unlabeled book. So now we transition from kind of Spain, the medieval age, into uh, Latin America as Spain begins to explore. So this unlabeled one is uh, uh, Bernal's History of the Conquest of Mexico. Uh, and then right next to it is Broken Spears, which is... So this is the Spanish side of the Conquest of Mexico. Broken Spears is the Aztec side of it. History of Mexico, what it says on the tin. Colombian Exchange, this was a game changer. In, uh, the, the, in the historiography of Latin America, which is about, this is just basically how was the old and the new worlds interacted, how that changed things. And that kind of launches an entire subgenre of history, which is called environmental history, uh, which I got a couple of different books on, as you'll see. This is uh, the biography. I've actually had this professor before. Like I, I took a class with him. But this is uh, by... Dr. Garcia, uh, Dr. Garcia Bryce, and it's it's really wedged in there. Um, this is Aya de la Torre and the Pursuit of Power in 20th Century Peru and Latin America. Uh, so it's a biography, really interesting uh, figure who's not really as well known as some other Latin American uh, politicians of the 20th century. Nicaragua, Revolution and Democracy. This is from when I was studying uh, the Sandinista transition into power. Uh, then there's an environmental history of Latin America. And then right here we have, okay, so I think I said this, did I say this before? But I have not read every single book on my shelves. Uh, I think you never should have read all the books on your shelves. You always got to have something else there because I think if you read every book you have, then you think you know everything and you stop reading. Uh, so sometimes what will often happen is if I see a book and it um, is on sale, I've heard a lot of interesting things about it. Even if I know I'm not going to get around to it anytime soon, I'll pick it up. And uh, so Open Veins of Latin America, I've heard, is like really, really controversial um, in its depictions of uh, like explaining the 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 how um, the colonialization of Latin America and its after effects and, and the um, I guess you could say the oppression of it and stuff of, of the Latin Americans by colonial powers and how they've been used. But it's also been called the Idiot's Bible. And, uh, and I think even the, the, the author himself, who was not a historian, I think he was like a journalist or something, he himself disavowed it. But I've just heard a lot of stuff like, God, it's so controversial. What's the deal? And so, like, you know what? I'm, I saw it, and, and usually I, I usually kind of see it kind of pricey, but I saw it cheap, and I thought, I'm going to pick that up and read it one day. So there it is. Haven't read it yet, though. Okay, Defending the Land of the Jaguar, another environmental history specifically focused on Mexico. Uh, Democratic Brazil Revisited is about Democratic Brazil. Uh, Operation Massacre uh, by Rodolfo Walsh. This is kind of like, again, where something that's like, oh, is this really a history book? Should this be in here? But I put it there. 
Okay, then over here, uh, we kind of had a section that I sort of squeezed in here because these books at the end were so big, this was the only shelf I could put them on. But we've got Wedgwood's, Wedgwood's Richelieu and the French Monarchy, which has a pretty fun cover because uh, Richelieu was once um, called a spider. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, if you know the Three Musketeers, this is their enemy. That's who he is. Peasant Uprisings by Moussinier. These are about peasant uprisings that happened in the 16th and 17th centuries. Uh, and then this leads into a few. I got these all separately um, at different times. But it's like these Norton books, which are kind of just general overviews of parts of Euro European history. So, like, you know, modern Europe, 18th century Europe revolution so like first half of the 19th century and then nationalism and reform in the second half 19th century europe is like my favorite well 19th century really globally is my favorite area of history to study so this is another one that i love to grab with them more of them whenever i can uh michael rapport's 19th century europe from the paul grave series then we got a series of uh bedford books bedford series books which are related to the 19th century or close to it so enlightenment european romanticism France and the Dreyfus Affair. That's a really, this is a really, really good one. Um, great sources, great analysis, excellent. Like, so these Bedford series, they're, they're very thin, but they squeeze so much in there. Um, Charles Darwin and the Question of Evolution and an actual copy of Origin of the Species here. Then we get Hawk's Child again. This is the one that sort of put him on the map. Uh, King Leopold's Ghosts. I have much higher opinion of this one compared to uh, Spain in Our Hearts. Uh, the King Leopold's Ghost, this is sort of what mainstreamed the genocide in the Congo in a uh, kind of like public consciousness. Then we've got Orlando Figg's uh, Crimean War. I got some funny stories about this book and when I was reading it, so if like this would maybe be a good candidate for a book if you guys want me to talk about it in more detail, there's the one. Okay, now let's come on home to the United States of America. So, um,. All right. Now, I have, like, some good general history books of the United States. I'm going to show them later. Uh, but, okay, starting from the left here, we've got Don't Know Much About History by Kenneth Davis. I think I had, used to have a copy of this I picked up when I was... Maybe it was, like, middle school. It, was, it used to be, like, this thing where the local libraries would do a book fair once a year, and you could just get dirt cheap books. And I saw this book, and it's, like, kind of segmented into, like, really small sections to read. Uh, and it's kind of fun. So I just completely wore my copy out. This is actually a relatively new one that got updated because Obama's there. And that used to be a picture of, uh, I think it was a picture of Lincoln. But, like, my old version was just disintegrating, so I picked this up. Then we've got, uh, so, yeah, it's a good, like, like once you kind of learn about history in school, then you read this to get the dirty, fun stuff. Uh, then we've got A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. This is a game changer. Uh, whether you like it or not, um, in uh, in the history, like the historiography of how American history was taught. Um, so yeah, I, I, I got my own copy here. Then we've got H. W. Brand's really popular, uh, well, popular historian. Uh, his this is his uh, the first American, his biography of Benjamin Franklin. Uh, and over here, I've got the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. If you don't have a copy and you live in the United States, just get one online for free. There, for, there's so many colleges and organizations that uh, give them away. Like, what's this one from? Yeah, this one's from Hillsdale. Um, well, like, like, I think like the ACLU does it. Southern Methodist University does it. J just look up free Constitution or something, and like they'll they'll mail you it for free. You just gotta give me your address because you know they need that to mail it to you. So, get one if you don't have it. It's super simple, easy to replace. Federalist Papers, of course, by Hamilton, Madison, and Jay, kind of only technically by Jay. Uh, Founding Brothers by Joseph Ellis. I don't have it, but I've heard that this guy's got a really good book on Jefferson. It's called American Sphinx. I want to check that out sometime because uh, I don't. I've, I've I have trouble finding good Jefferson biographies. So anyway, Founding Brothers is about um, the relationships the founding fathers had to one another. Uh, Democracy in America, classic text. Tocqueville is a Frenchman who comes over. And he uh, he sees America and he writes about it. A couple Bedford books here, Cherokee removal, um, and then the U.S. war with Mexico. This book is why I don't say a Mexican American war or Mexican war or the Mexico invasion. I say the U.S. war with Mexico. This 
This, I think, was the first Bedford book I ever read, and it's still probably the best. Um, by Ernesto Chavez, another professor I've been fortunate enough to have a class under. But I had high praise for it even before that. It's incredible. If you get one, this is the one. Um, okay, so we got a Wicked War. Speaking of one, it's the one. James McPherson says it at the, at the cover, and it's true. This book by Amy Greenberg. This is the one book on uh, the U.S. War with Mexico to pick up if you're going to get one. But... I actually wrote a whole like complicated paper that I presented at a conference once about um, the U.S. War with Mexico. So I have a lot of books from that. It's like U.S.-Mexican Wars by National Reader, uh, Mr. Polk's Army study uh, by um, what's his name, Bruce Winders? Yeah, uh, Richard Winders. Yeah, Richard Bruce Winders. Excuse me, which is about the army that invaded San Patricios in the United States. This is about the battalion that defected to the Mexican side. Um, this is actually a dissertation, so you can't buy this book. Um, don't ask how I got my hands on this. All right, Mexican-Americans in Texas history. I kind of thought this fit, so I just put it there. All right, then we've got a couple of slave ones, uh, slave narratives. The kind of two big ones, Harriet Jacobs' Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl and uh, Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. Apparently, there's some editions that have these two together, so that's cool. But I'm fine with the ones I have here. Because the uh, the narrative also has a couple of other writings from Douglas. Then there's Marie. So, so yeah, now we're kind of like in the slave section here. So this is by Gustave de Beaumont, who actually came to America with de Tocqueville. He's much less well-known. But he wrote this novel called Marie. And it's him, you know, basically saying the United States is great except for that whole slavery thing, which ruins it. And so this is a very interesting book. Uh, now we go into the Civil War era. Uh, this is the one that I kind of initially single volume when I was younger. We learned the Civil War from the Bruce Canton one. Uh, I never, I didn't have the triple volumes, but this was like a single volume version of it he had. And then there's another Kenneth Davis. Don't want, know much about the Civil War. It's definitely not as good as this one, uh, in my personal opinion. I think he wrote this one first. It's fine. It's um, it's not horrible, but this is much better. Um, okay. Now we go into The Wit and Wisdom of Abraham Lincoln. It's just a quote book. There's Fiery Trial by Eric Foner. This is the one he won. Uh, I think this is the one he won the Pulitzer Prize for, which specifically focuses on the uh, relationship between Abraham Lincoln and slavery. Then we got another Bedford uh, book, Abraham Lincoln's Slavery and the Civil War. So this is specifically focusing on his slavery writings. I've got a lot more Lincoln stuff somewhere else, which I'll show you, though. And I'm going to talk about Lincoln a lot before the end of this video, which I'm sure is going to be long as hell. All right, Public Art of Civil War Commemoration, which has uh, been a pretty hot topic last few years. And The Cause of Liberty, this is a uh, series of um, essays uh, by various um, well-respected scholars of the Civil War. So, of course, like James McPherson, but also David Blight and stuff. Juneteenth, this is actually like a kid's book. Um, but it's kind of funny because I, I went through the Texas public school system growing up. And we always knew about Juneteenth because it's a Texas holiday. And uh, it's kind of really coming to the foreground nationally. And, and, and it became a federal holiday uh, this year. Uh, although I didn't get federal holiday pay that day. But that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny how like that's now a national thing when it started in Texas. You know, that's just the United States for you. They want to take everything from us Texans. We have another H.W. Brands here one. This is a non-biography one he did where he's covering second half of the 20th century, uh, basically, yeah, the Gilded Age, uh, and it's an extremely clean copy, I like the weight of it, um, and, and, and it's, it's held up really well, there's just kind of that in the corner, uh, but it's good, good solid paperback, I love it. All right, here we have Lichtenberg's here, Franklin Roosevelt and the New Deal, you may know this guy from uh, being in the Ken Burns documentary on the Roosevelt's, talks about where he was when Franklin died. Uh, so then we have here Sons and Soldiers by Bruce Henderson. So this is a book I got by accident because I thought I was ordering something else entirely. I was trying to find this book on um, Jews that fled Germany and joined the U.S. Army and then came back. And it was like their personal accounts. This is actually just a biography. It's not a so I guess it's not like primary sources. These are it's a it's a convention and explanation of it. Pretty interesting, though. It was kind of like, oh, OK, not exactly what I was looking for. But that's interesting. Uh, Iwo Jima by Richard Newcomb, right next to With the Old Breed by Eugene B. Sledge, which is, of course, famous harrowing account of the Pacific War. Um, right here we have Monuments Men. Here's where I'm a basic bitch, but I'm sorry, this was the only one they had in the thrift store, was uh, the one with the movie poster. 
and everybody knows anybody who reads a book with a movie poster on it is a basic bitch. So I guess I'm a basic bitch, and I'm now demonetized for all that cursing. Another Bedford series, Linda Johnson and American Liberalism, because uh, I don't have any Johnson biographies right now. Um, the couple I want to get, I'm probably going to get next uh, next month, actually. And then presidential campaigns, this covers all of American history up until the 2000s election. Uh just kind of a fun book. It's like a reference book more than anything, but it's a fun book with lots and lots of presidential anecdotes. Um, so it's fun to just flip through for light reading. Okay, let's come on down to uh, probably my personally most important section of the bookshelf. Uh, this is like philosophy, like meta his historiography and philosophy. Um, so, so these are books that are. These are not for casual reading. These are for people studying to be a historian, I would mostly say. Like, if, there's no good reason for you to read these books if you're not studying to be a historian. It's like, this like this one actually I haven't even read yet. I, I picked this up recently in a thrift store. Uh, it's a philosophy of history. I forget who it's even by, but I love to pick them up whenever I see them. The Logic of Violence and Civil War. This is unbelievably definitive. Um, but, like, let's actually talk about these this chunk here, right here. This is the stuff, right? This is where... Well, like probably not the communist manifesto because there's a there's so many of those you know i could get that anywhere but but this chunk here if my apartment was on fire this is what i'm running in to save besides my cat <laughs> uh because they're dense and important and also i've annotated them and i don't want to go through and do it again but these are all philosophies of history mostly kind of germanic based german idealistic based but we've got Herder, who was a um apprentice of kant uh, and then we go into the Hegel introduction to the philosophy of history, which is incredibly important. Kant, actually Kant should be earlier. Yeah, let me switch that. Kant should be here because he's first. Um, Kant's history, uh, Hegel's phenomenology of the spirit. Look, love him or Hegel, love him or hate him. If you want to seriously, seriously get into the meta of history, um, you got to at least know Hegel's ideas. Uh, it's like Freud in psychology. You got to know who he is if you want to hate him, right? Uh, so, uh, then Communist Manifesto, because he was a, like a left Hegelian, a radical left Hegelian, so that kind of fits in there. And also, you know, you can't study 19th century Europe or, or indeed kind of the history of the world since then without at least reading the Communist Manifesto. It's this thin, people. You know, you can read it in an hour. I've got audio readings of it online. Look them up. Uh, you can hear me read them to you. We've got Nishi's. On the advantage and disadvantage of history for life, where he uh, philosophizes on Hegel's thoughts with a hammer. And then an ethics of remembering, which I hope gets reprinted one day. It's an absolutely incredible book. I've never read anything else like it. Uh, so yeah, ethics of remembering, history, heterology, and the nameless others. This is an incredibly dense book. It took me like, it took me a month to read it. Um... And I was annotating and, and cross-referencing the whole way. It's, uh, I, I, I really did a number here. Are we any other some Blake selections? Yeah, you can see this is what your average page looks like uh, in there. That's the one book I'd save from a fire because it's a lot to go through. And I have Philosophy of Nishi here. He probably shouldn't be. This is just kind of not all his works, but most of them. This probably should just be in its own philosophy section. Then we've got Rethinking History with Jenkins. Other really important text. Actually, this should also be earlier. Um, okay, site J. Winters, sites of memory, sites of mourning, great war, and European cultural history. So this is kind of like historical memory. How do we remember this stuff? Hannah Ardent's uh, really influential origins of totalitarianism in defense of lost causes. Uh, I picked this up when I saw it once in a. I do a lot of thrift store shopping, but I picked this up and. Um, then I started to read it, and I went, oh, this ain't memory. This is pretty serious, so I'm going to need to dedicate some time to it when I really want to read it. So I haven't gone through that yet. War. This is part of an Oxford series where they'll like, look at a concept, and there's a lot of primary sources. So this is like War Through the Ages, but not War Through the Ages, which I'll talk about later. Law and Society by Barkin. Uh, introduction, but it's very good. Another copy of The Prince. Uh, Two Treaties of Government by John Locke. Clauswitz on War. Uh, they say, I say, this is just kind of like a, how to write academically. More meta history. We've got Collingsworth, The Idea of History. Edward H. Carr's What is History? This is extremely good. 
Uh, Who Owns History by Eric Foner. Admittedly, I've not read this one yet. Uh, Short Guide to Writing History, Research Papers in Political Science. Okay, then we've got Meta Commentary on Democracy and Democratization. The participatory museum, like how do you make museums, exhibit labels, like how do you how do you write a, an exhibit label? So like a lay per like if you're interested in museums, you don't read this. This is for if you want to go into working at a museum. You know what I'm saying? Okay, this is like an interesting thing because I've actually studied uh, film a fair amount as well, especially in the context of historical stuff. So like we've got classics on screen. Uh, this is a, I think this is the essay collection. Um, but yeah, it's just like depictions of ancient Rome and Greece on film. Big Scream Rome by Monica Serrano. Serino. This is like the woman when it comes to the, the, the intersection of film, television, and, uh, ancient history. Rome, which is a series of essays. There she is again. There you are, Monica. Um, which covers the first season of Rome. There's a season two ver- a book, but it's extremely expensive. Like I've never seen it for less than 80 bucks. So this version was cheap. The season one was extremely cheap though. So I've got that shots in the mirror. This is actually about, uh, how, how like depictions of crime in film and, um, it's like art imitating life, life imitating art, uh, in, in, in culture and stuff. This is a very interesting stuff. If you're like a film, a big film dude, especially if you like gangster crime film stuff like that i'd recommend this and i got will durant's story of philosophy which is kind of holding this section up okay moving down here speaking of the ancients we come into some of the oldest books i have the histories by herodotus gotta have it and then thucydides this is pretty interesting. This is the landmark the city. So like these two I got in high school. This one I got more recently, which has like maps and there's a lot of uh, commentary in the margins. It's like this is basically the, the 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 Talmud if it was Thucydides. So really cool stuff there. Um, so yeah, going more into the ancient Greece and Rome, we've got the Iliad. This is the Lattimore translation. I can never decide if I like Lattimore or Eagles more uh, as translators. Um, I need to figure that out when I get some Euripides. All right, so we've got Hesiod and Theogenes, Plutarchs on Sparta, which also has uh, more stuff besides Plutarch in there. So, for example, Xenophon's Spartan Society uh, writings are in there, which is pretty cool. I recommend reading Xenophon stuff. You can look it up online. It's uh, it'll take like five minutes to read, <laughs> but it's like it's just basically saying this is what the law is in Sparta. Very interesting. Then we've got the Greek dramatists. We've got. Uh, it's, I'm never entirely sure how to pronounce these names. There's uh, Aeschylus. Uh, we've got the Oresteia Sorta Trilogy about Agamemnon and his family. Then we've got uh, Sophocles. This is the, uh, this is yeah, the, the three Thebian plays, but not the Seven Against Thebes, funnily enough. But these are the famous ones. Love these covers, by the way. These are some of my favorite Penguin Classic colors. They're simple, but extremely effective. This is just another copy of that. I probably should just get rid of this. Um... What's this doing over here? Oh yeah, we just have some more Thucydides. This is kind of like a, um, like a specified reader. Speaking of Xenophon earlier, the March of Country, the Anabasis, uh, inspiration for the book and movie The Warriors with the New York uh, gangs, really cool. Uh, Plato's Symposium. We've got Epictetus's The Handbook. Uh, Symposium and Phaedrus here. So you see, like, a lot of these Plato things, I get them for, like, 50 cents, $2 most at thrift stores and stuff, but I need to find a translation I like and get, like, a complete works or something one day. I just got to clean up this shelf. So many of these books are really old, and I keep referencing them, but I just want to clean it up, you know, like, uh, you know, put down some money and just, you know, get a nice version. We've got some dialogues of Plato there that they are listed. There's, most of this is The Republic. Last Days of Socrates, uh, that's a Penguin Classic version. We've got the Pocket Aristotle. Um, again, you know, I need, a, I need to get, like, some cleaned up versions of this. You'll notice I have no Euripides. Euripides, I need to decide on a translator and what editions that I want to get. Like, do I want to get the Oxford Classics? Do I want to look, you know, what do I want to do? I'll figure it out. Um, so, you know, I hope to do this uh, book tour thing as, like, an evolving series uh over the years like maybe do this once a year and you guys can watch my bookshelf evolve 
Okay, Storm Before, Storm Before the Storm, uh, which is by Mike Duncan. Mike Duncan has this habit of writing books that I wanted to write, but he does them first, and that's fine because he's the god of history podcasts. He's le- he single-handedly legitimizes the genre. Uh, so this covers like Marius and Sola and stuff. And I remember when I was younger, I wanted to write a book about them, uh, you know, kind of in modern, you know, form, and, and he's into it. So good for him. Plutarch's uh, Fall of the Roman Republic. I need to get a copy of Plutarch's Lives. Uh, we got a Bedford series book here on Spartacus and the Slave Wars. I got two copies of um, Julius Caesar's commentaries. His, uh, well, his, uh, you know, his, his, his conquest of Gaul. And I really love with these classics whenever they get a good cover picture because it can say so much. So, for example, this version... Uh, the Oxford World Classic version is it's obviously Caesar is conqueror. Um, you know, it's an emphasizing this is this is this is the badass story of how he took over modern day France. But then like the the Barnes and wait, is this the Barnes and Nobles? Yeah, this is the Barnes and Nobles edition. You've got the uh statue of the dying um Gaul. Um so you know, obviously these are both these are both um invoking something different uh and i think that's really awesome okay uh all right suetonius is the 12 caesars um don't worry tacitus is going to show up later this is not a classic book but it kind of goes in this section anyway this is martin goodsman's rome and jerusalem where he just talks about you know their clash uh, culturally and militarily edward gibbons decline and fall of the roman empire this is a bar uh, this is the uh the modern library classics version which has the intro by uh, Borstein. This is another one I've had since high school. And then this is just kind of a, a really interesting book. Um, yeah, by Nigel Rogers, Roman Empire. Kind of goes into the uh, a lot of stuff about the Roman Empire, such as the conquest. It goes into the architecture. It goes into the society uh, and stuff like that. It's just, it's just a good general thing. Uh, a lot of great pictures, too, which I appreciate. Okay. Asia time. Uh... Here, I don't have them all because I think there's six, but I have most of the Harvard classics, uh, the Harvard series on Imperial China. So, like, the first three are by Mark Lewis. So, it's like Qing and Han, China Between Empires when it split, the Tang Dynasty, the Song Dynasty, which uh, you don't really hear much about, and then the Yuan and Ming Dynasties. And they all have these uh, really nice uh, covers as well, which is... Uh, pretty cool um rebels of the heavenly kingdom this is not a history book it's a novel but i like found this in an attic somewhere and um it's it's yeah it's just about the uh the the freaking boxer rebellion and it's uh yeah just about this guy who goes on an adventure and he falls in love with the first woman he sees who doesn't have bound feet and uh, yeah, just a cool little thing. So I keep it there next to the trans- transitioning us out of Imperial China. This is another book. Actually, this shouldn't even be here. But oh, it's because yeah, actually, funny story with this. Yeah, so the Woman Warrior. This is like a pseudo memoir, and it's a, it's it's Chinese thing. I'll have to do a, a video of it its own about that if you guys want to explain it. But like it, it's Asian related. That's why it's here. We've got uh, Iris Chang's Rape of Ning King, and uh, the Comfort Women. So these are, of course, the Japanese atrocities during World War II. Uh, another Bedford book, Mao Zedong and China's Revolutions. Don't really have any other Maoist-related uh, or Communist China-related stuff. Um, there, oh, I didn't take the sticker off. Drift books. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. Uh, Bright Shining Lie, Neil Shannon's award-winning uh, thing about Vietnam. Another guy who was interviewed in Ken's Burns. Speaking of which... The Things They Carried, Absolute Classic by Tim O'Brien about uh, serving in Vietnam. My Lie, which is about the uh, the massacre. Another Bedford book. Then we've got Bao Nien. This is not really as well known, I think. This is his novel. So it's, this is essentially a North Vietnamese perspective on um, the Vietnam War. Because uh, he served. And uh, yeah, classic. Then we've got chunk of books here these are all cambodia related this is well this is like the 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 ancient not ancient but you know the Khmer civilization then we go into cambodia 75 to 82 
And then uh, Voices from S21 by David Chandler. No, not that David Chandler, different David Chandler. Okay, then we go into Afghanistan. We've got this one by David Isby, which was done in the middle of the U.S. Um, do we want to call it an invasion? Do we want to call it an occupation? I don't know. It's a little dicey right now. Let's skip that. Uh, and uh, we've got Stephen Tanner's Military History of Afghanistan, which he published in 2002 after the United States had uh, defeated uh, Afghanistan, you know, had, had uh, you know, entered the country. This is really damn good. Concise, but, but detailed and um, good analysis. I recommend it. Uh, this is just a fun little history of the world thing to kind of mark the end of the uh, Asian section. This is by a guy called Gombrich. I like it because he wrote it like his grandkids were going to read it. So it's almost like a children's book, but not really. Um, I don't know. He has a really good voice. Does that make sense? Like, I'd love to hear an audio book of this with him reading it. Like, you know, your grandpa telling you cool stories before you go to sleep or something. Okay, now we go into Europe with an emphasis on Germany, origins of modern Europe. So this is the 16, 1700s war in European history. That's, again, kind of a meta one. Um, well, not meta, but, you know. Okay, All Quiet on the Western Front by Remark. Uh, obviously a classic. I don't have to talk about it. But then we've got Not So Quiet by uh, Helen Zena Smith, which is not her real name. But this is like, this is All's Quiet on the Western Front. But instead of a, a, the story of a German infantryman, it's the story of a uh, a British female ambulance driver, um, and it's real. I I definitely recommend it. Like if you read All's Quiet, Not So Quiet was essentially written deliberately as like a British tribute to to Remark's work uh, by another veteran, like because that's what she was. Really good book. Germany tried democracy, which basically covers the Weimar Republic mostly. Uh, then we go into World War Two, Ordinary Men. Um, this is like, I think mandatory reading. It should be, uh, whenever you're studying the Holocaust or, or just in general, the atrocities, uh, committed during world war two in Europe. It's an amazing book. Uh, then we've got Mein Kampf. Um, I accidentally stole this. I swear it was an accident. Yeah. But yeah, I have Mein Kampf by Hitler, uh, much, much more boring than you would think. Uh, and then I've got Ian Kershaw's single volume version of the biography, um, cause, uh, yeah. And he explains in the intro why it's kind of okay to read this version. Uh, you know, if I ever want to get the two volume version, um, I will, but probably only if I'm going to do like, like, you know, write a book that needs it or something that like is a, is a major source. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's the man himself. Oh, videos demonetized. Okay. Hitler's in the shot. Okay. Let's move on down here. So you kind of might notice as we go further down, we're getting on the bottom shelves. Things are getting less organized because it's like less, it's not at eye level and it's just stuff I don't really know what to do with. Uh, we have Jeffrey of Monmouth's History of the Kings of Britain. I have not read this. Uh, I want to, when I'm done reading the, uh, the Fate visual novel, which I'm like halfway through, I really want to get into Arthurian literature. And uh, I just saw this and I know that this is supposed to be like one of the starting points. So I picked that up. Haven't read it yet though. Uh, we got the Seamus uh, Heaney version of Beowulf, the really famous one. I want to get the Tolkien translation at some point, though. And then Grendel. Uh, Grendel's here. Even though Grendel's a book, it's not like a classic. Well, I guess it is a classic now. But, you know, it and Beowulf, of course, they're related. So put them next to each other. This was a set. I think I got this for like five bucks a long time ago. I don't even think you can read it. It's so faded and old. But this is the his a history of the English-speaking people by winston churchill so it's uh, uh yeah i don't i don't think it's coming up on the camera really but you've got birth of britain the new world the age of revolution and the great democracies um over here so as you can see we're like in english slash british history we've got another bedford book english east india company at the height of the mughal expansion uh this mostly covers a war between the british and the mughals pretty interesting stuff a couple pelican histories of england here I've got the, uh, yeah, 17th century and the 18th century. Uh, and then we go into the 19th century here, late 19th century crisis of imperialism. So kind of the late Victorian into the Edwardian age. Uh, this is like a general history thing, but I just left it here. Why do I not have this sticker off? God, I've had this book for years and years. But anyway, end of the European era. Actually, this should be later. This is the 20th century. Yeah. Okay, then we got another one of those Oxford readers, like the war one earlier. This one focuses on the British Empire. And then right next to it is another one. 
yeah, these books are on this specific shelf because um, they they're um, they don't fit on any of the other shelves. As you can see, they're squeezed in there almost to the millimeter. So then we have a section here, which is kind of just haphazard stuff that's all the same size. So I fit it here. Um, so like 100 Decisive Battles in History, another Oxford one, Apollo's Angels. This is the history of ballet. Super, what a, what a unique idea you know like let's do a history of ballet i loved it it was it's i haven't read it all i mostly was using it for reference for something but it's a pretty cool book um natasha's dance and other orlando figs not the last time we're seeing him this is his cultural history of russia upton sinclair yes that upton sinclair this is his cry for justice which um sounds you know like socialist leftist stuff and he was a leftist but uh there's a lot of it's basically a, a listing of primary sources that are divided by theme um and there's all sorts of people in here like bismarck's in here plato's in here there there it's it's a really interesting uh bit of literature okay we got christopher clark's uh iron kingdom i think this is his most famous book which is the history of prussia terrific cover too just 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 a uh, good use of the space. Rise and downfall of Prussia. Oh, come on, get in there. Yeah. Uh, Salvage pages. These are diaries of children uh, during the Holocaust. Because so as you can see, this is just all over the place. They're just all here because they all fit here. Uh, and then John Meacham's biography on um, uh, the first Bush president. And it's uh, it's kind of like an interesting, like the material the outside is made of is very different. Uh, I guess you can't really feel it through the screen but uh just wanted to point that out okay and then down here at the bottom we got stuff that i really just don't even know what to do with but there is some interesting stuff here's a book on lenin 10 days that shook the world by john reed john reed <laughs> i only know him as jack i guess it's because we're friends uh and yeah and then these are like a couple of like essay collections they're just like these silly little you did what you know mad plans like these are just silly things that happened in history that went wrong uh, same thing with it seemed like a good idea just uh these are just essays on yeah Silly Things That Went Wrong, uh, edited by Bill Fawcett. Little book here on the Easter Uprising. Uh, Rio Grande Review, doesn't matter what that is. Professor and the Madman by Simon Winchester. We've got some, these are like the only mangas I have, and these aren't even mine. I borrowed them, but it's Planetes. This is the copy of Anna Karenina that I read in high school. I have a better version now, one that's not falling apart. That's by the same translator. I'm rereading it right now. I guess I'm just holding on to this out of sentimental value until I'm done, though. Then I'll throw it away because, yeah, like this is it is completely falling apart. That's why the rubber bands are there. Rise and Fall of the Great Powers. This was a pretty big deal back when it came out by Paul Kennedy. Ah. Okay. Sorry, I think we cut out there for a second. Um, okay. So. We got a little miniature Puerto Rican section here that just sort of happened. Uh, Puerto Rican pioneers in jazz. I, I like jazz. I get more into it as I get older. And uh, I got given this as a gift. A lot of these books are gifts. I probably should point out when they're, but lots and lots of these books are gifts. So, yeah, somebody gave me this as a gift after I did Ken Burns jazz. Cause it's like, yeah, the Puerto Ricans, they were there too. Uh, the jazz version of uh, Ken Burns is criticized a lot, I've noticed, um, for various reasons, which I'll talk about in some other video maybe one day. Um, but I had no idea when I first watched it how, how criticized it is. It seems to be like his most maligned work. Got a socio-historical interpretation of Puerto Rico. This is just like some little books about Puerto Rico somebody gave me. Uh, another, yeah, actually, now that I think about it, I think these were all given to me. Uh, yeah, this is like just a cute little kid's book. Who was Roberto Clemente? He's a baseball player. It reminds me, I need to get that Ty Cobb, my own copy of that Ty Cobb biography. I like reading about baseball. Kind of more than I like watching it, actually. How the Irish Saved Civilization um, by Thomas Cahill. Kind of famous book. Two copies of the Epic of Gilgamesh. We've got an old Penguin Classics version here. And then the more modern one that was translated by Stephen Mitchell. Uh, and with that, we're finally done with shelf one. Okay, so now we are on um, the middle of shelf two because we're keeping it history related. Uh, basically, this is my David McCulloch um, collection because uh, I'm going to break his records. He's got two Pulitzers, two National Book Awards. What I call that is rookie numbers. Check back in 50 years. All right, so you know, he's great. I have John Adams here in the side with the television version, but I'm actually okay with that because I love that show. Uh, it's amazing. 
watch at least one episode every year uh, for the 4th of July. Um, so the ones that I have, I don't have all of them, but I got Jonestown, Brave Companions, which is an essay, uh, um, just a bunch of essays put together. The Great Bridge, Mornings on Horseback, which is about uh, Theodore. Truman's about Truman. Oh, yeah. Great Bridge is about Brooklyn Bridge, by the way. 1776, which I was flipping through again recently because a friend of mine, I guess, is going to start reading it. Then we go into the Doris Kearns Goodwin section. So this is, this shelf is kind of like my, I guess you could say Hall of Fame historians, maybe. or uh, But like there's some who I read a lot of who aren't on here. We'll talk about it later. But we've got Doris Kearns, Goodwin's uh, No Ordinary Time which is about Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. That's a Pulitzer winner. Uh, the Bully Pulpit, which is about Teddy and Taft and journalism. Now, this is fun. I've got here um, Leadership in Turbulent Times. This actually, I got this in a thrift store. This is uh, an advanced copy, uh, you know, the, the advanced reader's edition there. So uh, that's kind of cool. Um, Borstein, we brought up earlier. I've got his trilogy, Creators, Discoverers, Seekers, and also Cleopatra's Nose. Uh, these are really, they, they're, they're different, but they're interesting. I especially recommend the Discoverers. Then we've got Barbara Tuckman, who's kind of fallen out of favor. I've got the Guns of August from her. Um, a friend of mine, you know the dog ate my homework? A friend of mine's dog literally ate this. Uh, so uh, that's what happened there, but I haven't thrown it away because I annotated it. So I was like, okay. It's just got character now. Got her practicing history and notes from China. Then the incredible, incredible uh, three-volume set of the history of, uh, or like the biography of um, Theodore Roosevelt by Edmund Morris. I love how these books feel, by the way. They've got a nice weight. The papers are like, I don't know how to describe it. They're thin, but they're strong. They're just amazingly made. I love them. And so that's why I don't mind not having them in um, hardcover. We got some John Julius Norwich here, who I really like how he writes History of Venice. He's a very friendly writer. Does that make sense? Uh, and I've got one half of his History of the Normans in Sicily. I lost the other one. And then I got some other space here, which I haven't filled yet. Uh, I thought I have some hardcovers from a lot of these authors, and I thought about stacking them there, but I think it would just be a little bit, a little bit too much. Uh, it doesn't, I didn't like the look of it, so they're elsewhere as we will see. Okay, uh, that does it with the history sections uh, for these bookshelves. We're gonna come back to some more history books later, but now uh, let's take a look at sci-fi, fantasy, and fiction. Okay, we're now on the top left. Um, this is gonna go faster. These are all my paperbacks, except this is actually a hardcover of the Wheel of Time series. Uh, the only one I don't have is the final one, Memory of Light, because uh, I have a hardcover of that, which I'll show later. But because the ending, these last couple ones were co-written with Sanderson, this transitions into the Brandon Sanderson section. I've actually not read these five, <laughs> funnily enough, but I picked them up cheap because I'm like getting into the Cosmere. I'm going to read Warbreaker soon once I'm done with something else. Well, we've got Elantris, Warbreaker, and the Mistborn Trilogy. These are all cheap as hell, so that's why I didn't mind buying them and like, yeah, I'm sure it's good. Brandon Sanderson, this is actually, I used to have a really, really beaten up copy of Way of Kings in paperback, but the, the, I'm actually friends with the world's handsomest man, and he, uh, if you're watching this, hey, handsome man, uh, yeah, and he gifted me a new copy of that, and then this is my edition of Words of Radiance, which as you can see has been to absolute hell. Uh, I got this like for 50 cents at, on a, a library bookshelf or something. Arcanum Unbound, which is like a short story thing. Then over here, uh, we got... A trilogy of uh, fantasy books I never see people talk about. The Barnabas Trilogy. This is like a genie's point of view, mostly, in a fantasy world. It's not the best fantasy, but it's interesting. Uh, I've got here a copy of Dragon Republic. I'm reading Poppy War now, and I'm almost done with it. I already really, really like it. So I've already got the sequel on standby. But Poppy War is not here because I'm reading it. And then Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. I don't have any of his other stuff. I hear his other stuff is also very, very good, but this is what I've got. Okay. Oops. <laughs> okay, now coming on down, we come to the pride of my sci-fi collection, my Robert Heinlein books. I want to eventually have every single book, uh, and this is never going to look clean because too many companies have too many different ones of his book. Uh, but over the far one here, this is a copy of Time Enough for Love I've had since high school. Got passed around with my friends. This was the only possession I took with me when I joined the military. 
and I, th- I thought I was going to get thrown away, but it managed to get through it. Uh, and it's just so beaten up. It looks like I've been scrubbing floors with it or something, but it's too sentimental to me, so I hold on to that copy. Uh, but, yeah, I'm just going to read them off. Um, and, by the way, would you guys like to make, make a video on uh, the order to read Hot Robert Heinlein in? Because he's, he, he can – there's a correct way, I think, to get into Heinlein. you got to be careful about it, though. So, over here are, like, his shorter juvenile books mostly – has space that would travel, Podkin of Mars, The Unpleasant Profession of Jonathan Hogue, and then 6XH, uh, which is the same thing, basically. Assignment in Eternity, Waldo and Magic Inc., Tomorrow the Stars, For Us the Living, this was a post-sumptuous thing. Farman's Freehold, we've got Glory Road, this is kind of a novel. This is not a horrible starting point, by the way, but this is, this is very, very good. Check this out. Come on, are you interested already? They're fighting a dino. Um... Tunnel in the Sky, uh, Friday, Beyond the Horizon, Rocketship Galileo, Pass Through Tomorrow is a series of stories, so is Expanded Universe, The Man Who Sold the Moon, The Rolling Stone, Starman Jones, Sixth Column, Between Planets, The Puppet Masters, Star Beast, Starship Troopers, which is the famous one. This is actually the second copy I've ever had because the first one got worn out. Uh, Stranger in a Strange Land, this is another one that like me and my friends read in high school and just got passed around and it's like completely gone to hell, but I hold on to it for sentimental value. Orphans of the Sky, which leads into Revolt in 2100 and Methuselah's Children. Except you could read this before this, actually. But I'm going to make that Heinlein book. You know, I'm going to make that Heinlein book reading order video, whether anybody asks for it or not. The, the, the public needs to know. Here's my nice copy now of Time Enough for Love, which I read from now when I want to read it. This is actually my favorite ever sci-fi book. Dune is great, but this is just period the best one ever, in my opinion. It's my personal favorite. I'll Fear No Evil, which coincidentally is the worst Heinlein book in my opinion, but there was mitigating reasons for it. Okay, Job, Conan, Beauty of Justice, and then the big three that he ended his career on. Number of the Beast, The Cat That Walks Through Walls, and To Sail Beyond the Sunset. Then we've got... George Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. I have Dance of Dragons, but it's like a bigger paperback version, so it doesn't fit. It's at my parents' house. Isaac Asimov, the classic Foundation trilogy. Uh, and then also Foundation and Earth and Foundation's Edge. And then there's Nemesis. Um, then we come back to Highland. These are over here just because it looks nicer, so I don't break up the flow of the paperbacks. We have is The Moon is a Harsh mistress, mistress, which is the last one he won a Hugo Award for. Stranger in Strange Land original uncut. This is the version I read from. And uh, I have the second part of his biography, which I haven't read yet because I haven't gotten the first part because the first part is expensive. I managed to find this really cheap. I got this for like six bucks, but usually they're like 35 bucks. So I'm waiting on getting that first one cheap and then I'm going to read it. Um, okay, now we go to the God of Fantasy, Tolkien. So I've got. The Hobbit, and then the trilogy of the Lord of the Rings. This is a kind of beat up copy. I took this into the field. Um, then we've got like a lot of his extra extraneous work in Middle Earth. So Lays of Berylin, The Shaping of Middle Earth, Book of Lost Tales 1 and 2, Lost Roads and Other Writings, The Silmarillion, which is the Bible of the Tolkien verse. Then there's the uh, Smith of Wound Major and Farmer Giles of Ham. These are just a couple little fun short stories. And uh, this has kind of been more relevant lately, his translation of Sir Gowan and the Green Knight, uh, and also Pearl in Sor Orfeo, but it's mostly about the Green Knight, this one. Uh, go check that, that movie out. I think it maybe could have been like 20 minutes shorter, but it's pretty good. And then Children of Huron, unfortunately, I lost the dust jacket. Okay, now we go into the Tolkien of uh, science fiction, uh, the Dune series. So I've got all the originals, Dune, Dune of Saya, Children of Dune, God Emperor, Heretic's Chapter House. Then there's Sandworms and Hunter, the trilogy of the uh, machine, like, yeah, the Butlerian Jihad trilogy, which if I can get a hardcover copy of Butlerian Jihad, I'm going to like give this to a thrift store or something. Uh, these will probably be the only ones by Kevin Anderson and Brian Herbert I'll ever read, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, it's getting a little out of control how they're milking uh, Brian's father's work. Okay, more sci-fi. We got Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, The Illustrated Man. This is a really cool, like, short story series. It's about this guy's tattoos, and each has a story. Uh, Orson Scart Card, Ender's Game, Speaker for the Dead, and Ender's Shadow. Harry Turtle Doves, Guns of the South. This is a fun little short one. Um, I did a book report on this once in a, that I didn't have to. It was just for extra credit, but I did uh, spice it up in English Teacher's Day back in high school. She was getting quite a laugh out of it. Um, so 
Then we've got uh, the Harry Turtle Dove Southern Victory series, which I got these all through bookstores or thrifts, and a lot of them have fallen apart, so like I don't have a how few remain anymore. But there's the Great War trilogy, and I've got two of the American Front ones, so keeping an eye out for those in thrift stores, just so I can like complete the collection again. I've already read it, but it'd be nice to have them together. Then we've got the World War series. This is the one where uh, the aliens invade during World War II. Yeah, so so this is the so this is this is the South ones World War, uh, the Civil War, but starting in uh, like 1865. Excuse me, 1864, and then uh, the Southern Victory series is if the South wins the Civil War, but it becomes like a huge series. Uh, and they win at Antietam instead of in 64. Uh, and then over here, Harry Turtle Dove's World War. This is of Aliens Invaded During World War II, and Homeward Brown is a sequel to that. We've got Wicked by Gregory Maguire. I don't have any of his other ones. I haven't read any of the other ones. Sorry, I haven't. Um, I got, actually got this as a gift, but I liked it. Uh, Chronicles of Narnia. This is a paperback, but my God, it has held up incredibly. I had this. I got this in high school by C.S. Lewis. Good stuff. Okay, yeah, sorry. I thought the camera cut off for a second. Okay. So here we have the classics, which I'm just going to lift off real quick. We got some Jane Austen, Jane Eyre's Charles Bront, G G Gaskell, was, uh, Mary Barton, which is a really interesting 19th century England classics book. Bram Stoker's Dracula, which is incredible. Um, Franklin's, like, I couldn't believe how good Dracula was when I read it. Um, Mary Sherry's Frankenstein, Charles Dickens' Pickman Papers, Great Expectations. Oh, yeah, this is the Dickens section. Tale of Two Cities, Hard Times, Oliver Twist, Our Mutual Friend, which I have not read because I'm not about to die. Anybody who's read less knows what I'm talking about. Lost, The Lost, The Television Show Lost, you know what I'm talking about. Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness and The Secret Chair, Kipling's uh, Jungle Book, War of the Worlds. These are like basically in chronological order. This is like the English classics, I should say, because I got different sections for classics in different areas. Um, so, Brave New World. Then George Orwell's Animal Farm, George Orwell's uh, 1984. Uh, that's a pretty classic, cool cover. Uh, Signet classic. La Care, the spy who came in from the cold. Uh, really like this cover too. We got some Ronald Dahl here. I have two copies of Going Solo. So like Boy, and uh, this is this is the guy who did Char uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But these two are basically his autobiographies. So there's Boy and then Going Solo. And then I got the sequel to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, which is better in my personal opinion. Um, it's like, it, like you know, they're kids' books. It's not a huge deal, but they're really fun. I, I thought Great Glass Elevator was more fun. Okay, Jen, James Fenway Cooper's The Last of the Mohicans, another book I've had for so many years and has held up incredibly well. Uh, Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne. We're now in the American classics. Herman Melville's Billy Boyd and other uh, stories. Type E. Uh, which is a pretty interesting story of Paul Neat, you know, going out into the Pacific Islands. Uh, I have two copies of Moby Dick. I used to have a different one, but I, I got rid of it. It was old, and uh, I wanted to get a new edition. So I got this one. I found this in a thrift store, and it's, like, kind of larger, nice size font. Uh, so I appreciated that. And, like, the whale's cool. But then I found this, which is, like, they're called, like, the Teardrop Classics from Penguin or something. And... I guess they would take an author uh, with the, the first letter of their last name started A to Z and M was Melville or Moby Dick or maybe it was the other way it was a name but this is a really cool edition like it has an intro essay it looks pretty uh, like like the the color of the pages and stuff whoops um so it's uh yeah and it's got like these interesting quotes at the beginning if i talk if i do a video talking about moby dick i'm going to do it out of this copy uh but it's it's really cool and it's got the library binding with the uh plastic so it's going to stay clean which i appreciate we've got uh melville's uh battlefield pieces and aspects of the war so this is poetry from the civil war some jack london uh, I have two copies of Call of the Wild because I got given this one as a gift. Uh, the Sea Wolf is there too. Uh, William Cather's My Antonia. Yes, they made a, a book out of the uh, Motion City soundtrack song. Um, F. Scott Fitzgerald's uh, Great Gatsby, As I Lay Dying, which I find myself reading whenever somebody close is dying. Uh, then Steinbeck, who I'm a big fan of, probably my favorite American author in terms of classics. Oh my gosh, Conquering er, Voyages in Time confirmed communist because of Grapes of Wrath, right? Uh, Travels with Charlie, 
Red Pony, The Moon is Down. I just saw this in a bookstore, and I went, I've never even heard of this, so I picked it up. Um, there's The Grapes of Wrath, Speaking of the Devil. And I got two copies of East of Eden uh, here, both Penguin Classics, actually. Uh, yeah, it, uh, you, that's, of course, my favorite Steinbeck novel. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Stuart Little by Edie White, S.E. Hinton's The Outsiders. And then the better S.E. Hinton book, in my opinion, it's like a sequel, but you can read it on its own. That was then, this is now. It's a it's a really great young adult book. Um, and I am 99% sure that Gungrave, the, uh, the anime, which is one of my favorite animes of all time, like it's top three, uh, is based on this book. Uh, so yeah, Gungrave. Check it out. But skip the first episode. I can't stress that enough. Don't watch the first episode. Jump right to episode two. It's critically important. Okay, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Slaughterhouse Five by Vonnie uh, William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Daniel Key's Flowers for Algaron. Catch-22. A uh, copy of Bless Me Ultimo, which I have not read yet. I'm not a huge fan of this copy. Um, and then Gentle Hands, which is um, an excellent like young adult reading book. Uh, with an amazing twist. It's actually like a complex book, and um, I don't want to show the cover of it because the cover gives away the twist. Uh, it's a super good book. Okay, so now we're going into uh, foreign uh, classic literature, meaning non-English uh, literature, and I don't count the Irish as English, nor should you. This is a perfect example of a book I have, but I haven't read yet. This is just a gorgeous copy of The Tale of Genji. I've opened it up. I've read some of the prose. I think it's translated well. There's an intro essay. There's all sorts of good stuff. It looks beautiful. It's in amazing condition. And I, I yeah, I said, like, well, hell, let me pick it up. This is a gold. This is a great find. And, uh, yeah, I probably won't read that, at least till next year. Probably longer. Don Quixote, Cervantes. I can't get this off the cover. It just won't come off. It's been years. Okay, now we get into the Irish literature. Picture of Dorian Gay, Gray by Wilde. And then we have the James Joyce section, Finnegan's Wake, which is hilarious. Uh, Ulysses, and then the, the, the Ulysses translators, so to speak. The new Bloomsday book. Uh, Stuart Gilbert's Ulysses. Uh, yeah, so kind of need these. These three are always open together <laughs> when I'm reading Ulysses. Uh, portrait of an artist and a, a young man in Dubliners. I got this because the portrait of the artist as a young man is in there. Because I already had a copy of the Dubliners. Uh, which is a little beat up. Because uh, when I actually visited Dublin, I took this with me. I took Ulysses also, you know, reading on the plane and stuff. And then this is just a little thing. I got the, I think I got this for like 10 cents. It's just, it's just a copy of the dead, which is in the Dubliners. So really, between these three, I've got three copies of the dead. <laughs> Uh, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Now we're getting into the good stuff. Some Tolstoy here. Uh, love this. I haven't read this yet, but look at this. I know what it's about. It's about Russians in Chechnya, uh, which Tolstoy was in. But, of course, this is a more, you know, the more modern Chechnya stuff. Be I have amazing cover concept. I loved it. Um, that's Hajat Morav by Tolstoy. War and Peace, Oxford World Classics. I'm actually going to pseudo reread this soon. Uh, I think starting in November because um, I found out I had actually read an abridged copy of War and Peace. I had no idea, so I only read like half of it. So this is – can't wait to crack into this in a couple months. But I'm not doing it yet because I'm rereading Anna Karenina. Uh, this is a copy I got in a thrift bookstore mostly for – I'd heard good stuff about the translation. I do like comparing translations of books I really like. Uh, I'm rereading this on a different translation right now though. And um, I liked it back when I read it many years ago, but uh, it's even better now that I'm older. Love Levin. He's amazing. Then what I'm going to read after War and Peace is, uh, these, these two are on my to-read list, um, is Writer at War, Vasily Grossman and the Red Army, and then Life and Fate. Yeah, recurring, recurring picture on my bookshelf, uh, The Attack Outside of Stalingrad. Uh, yeah, so those are on to read. This is Mandela's, uh, Nelson Mandela's authorized uh, biography by Anthony Simpson. Now we've got some Leon Uris here. We've got Armageddon, Battle Cry, which is like pseudo autobiographical, Exodus, Mil and Mila 18. Um, and I have a hardcover copy of Trinity somewhere. Um, Killer Angels by Michael S uh, Sara. This is not foreign literature. Neither is this. Yeah, so we're out of the foreign 
I need to reorganize this actually. I kind of made the mistake. Anyway, so we got Killer Angels. This is the original copy of Les Miserables that I read. I had a, uh, and I found it like this actually uh, in high school because somebody had thrown it away. Uh, it was their assigned reading. And it has not gotten any worse over the years. Um, but I have a nicer version I read from now, but I like this for nostalgia. Emile Zola's uh, Germinal and also his Ladies Paradise, which I have. This is the Oxford World Classic version. I read this for a class. Um, interesting concept. Uh, the plot and not the plot, the characters. Like I've, this is it's a it's a good book, but with an awful main character. She's just horrible. Yeah, she's inside. So, uh, ugh, annoys me to no end. Anyway, the Tao of Pooh. Yeah, this is kind of a mishmash stuff here now. Tale of Desperu. Now we got some Anthony Anthony Burgess, Tremor of Intent, which is like a detective thing. Clockwork Orange, extremely famous. Um, but also uh, the Wanting Seat is here, which is a super underrated one of his. Um, basically, this one is a world in which uh, homosexuality is actively being encouraged. But um, <laughs> it's kind of funny in hindsight because there's an egg on the cover. And uh, I found out recently that eggs are um, what trans people who haven't transitioned yet called themselves because, you know, they haven't hatched into their other gender yet so it's kind of fun it's pretty damn funny actually like i hope i didn't offend anybody and then we got inside mr enderby by anthony burgess which is part of a series and i don't even think this is the first person part of the series but i saw it and i grabbed it brief wondrous life of oscar wow dominican writer and his this is how you lose her uh, blood of the dawn this is a peruvian writer um and then the brothers karamazov okay Coming on down here, as you can see, it's getting more mishmash. We've got the Led Zeppelin biography by Richard Cole, who was their uh, road manager. They're my favorite band. Wilt Chamberlain, my favorite ba basketball player. The Children's Homer. This actually isn't bad. I read this when I was a kid before I read the Iliad, but it's pretty good as an adult, too. It's just got illustrations. I guess that's why they call it a children's version. Uh, Born to Run by Christopher McDougall. De definitely not an... an uh, Definitely not a perfect book, but uh, it's pretty interesting. It, like uh, it's like pseudo history, pseudo running blog, um, pseudo corporate history. I, I was reading this a lot when I was training uh, for for uh, to run a marathon, uh, which I did do and complete successfully. By the way, if anyone's curious. Um, then we've got Eddie Guerrero's uh, autobiography, which came out after he died. Uh, rest in peace. And then the Shinsuke. Shinsuke Nakamura. This is the advanced reader copy a friend of mine gave me for my birthday, where uh, I guess like, because you know it's, they say it's by him, but it's like ghost written, uh, and and so like this is the original version that it's like a series. You know, you see the it's the transcript basically of interviewing him about his life, and um, I like it. I like it uh, a lot. So I'm pretty happy that I have that. Um, Okay, Godfather by Mario Puzo. Then these are some weird books here. Trout Fishing in America by Richard Brautig. Um, these these are kind of like, I don't know what you call them. They're like offbeat, beatnik, punk era stuff. Like, I don't know, yeah, so Trout Fishing in America. This is experimental literature. Uh, Blood and Guts in High School by Kathy Aker, who I think died, um, even though she was young. Uh, the Woman Warrior, which we saw earlier. Um... So the reason I have two copies is because I was reading that for a class and then uh, I, I had a lot of time where I was going to be on campus and I was going to read it because I had to that day, but I had left it at home and um, it's this whole long story, but basically I ran to the bookstore and I luckily managed to find a $2 copy. So I, I like, I bought it just to read it at school and I read most of it that day. So that's how I ended up with two copies. So this is an interesting series. Um, it's called An American Pet Family Portrait by Jack Cavanaugh. Uh, where it follows uh, an American family starting, or like they become an American family. But it starts with this protagonist called Doug Morgan in book one called The Puritans. And it follows him and then his descendants through American history. So it goes like the initial colonization of America, pre-revolutionary America, Revolutionary War, Civil War, Pioneer Era, World War One, World War Two, Vietnam. It's, it's, you know, it, it, it's not the highest of literature, but I really enjoyed it uh, when I was a kid. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. Okay. We got holes here. Dig them up. up, up. Uh, Arthur Miller's The Crucible. Love that cover. Albert Camus' Stranger. 
Um, Stephen King uh, books here. My favorite one, Needful Thing. Yeah, basically these are my favorites for the most part. Uh, Needful Things, Bachman books, The Stand, It. Skeleton Crew and Eyes of the Dragon. I I, uh, I used to have a copy of Christine, but it was just completely falling apart. Just the pages were falling everywhere. That's how the Skeleton Crew is getting to. Uh, Blockade Billy. I, I just picked this up for a buck somewhere. Ain't bad. Uh, Star Wars Revenge of the Stith. Uh, I don't watch or read or do anything Star Wars related, not since Last of the Jedi. But this guy, Matthew Stover, this was a pretty good job of polishing a turd. Uh, I know everybody loves the prequels now, but I was there when they were coming out and they were being criticized. Practice Rust, this is Name of the Wind. Haven't read this yet. We got like a religious section here. Reza Alsan's uh, Zealot. And then uh, Coffee of the Holy Bible. I had like these nice Norton versions of the Bible. Uh, like, you know, it was like they were so big where it's like there was one book for the Old Testament, one book for the New. But I gave them to a friend of mine. So here's a funny thing. So this is a different copy of the of the Bible. And this covering, as you can see, is ripped. It's because I, I used to have these on a different part of the shelf because I moved them since I don't have the big Norton ones anymore. And so this copy of the Quran ended up, like, ripping off part of the Bible. So, like, it's, it's part of this book is adhering to this book of the Quran. And there's something very symbolic about that. And then I've got, like, an Oxford World Classics uh, version of the Quran, which has some you know good essays okay now we're into the poetry i ended up with two copies of the complete poems of john keats i'm not sure how this is going to come up when i do uh legend of the galactic heroes i'll, I'll explain why uh, of you know when it comes up uh john milton's paradise lost some kipling sonnets from the portuguese J. F. yes yeah, so these are just portuguese poems chinese poems japanese poems uh, lessons on expulsion. This is like a Hispanic woman who went to Princeton. Her literature, her, her poetry, it's a bit experimental as well. Um, and then uh, Leonard Cohen's The Flame. So this is like posumptuously published. It's some poems and stuff of his. Okay. Last shelf on the left. Now we're really just mishmashing stuff where it's like I don't know where to put these. We got The Book of Awesome. Which is look like was a blog on the internet and got turned into a book. It's just a fun little read. Make it take it, which is about college basketball. That's a local publisher's book. Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Carl Sagan's Sagan's. Uh, I actually took this with me when I was in Fort Hood doing some field exercises, or uh, not Fort Hood, Fort Polk. So uh, this is what happens when you take a book to the swamp. It gets in that condition. Ah, my my hat. Okay. Okay. So, we got uh, Anne Rand's Atlas Shrug, Fountainhead, Anthem, We the Living, so the big four. Dan Brown's Angels and Demons. This is such a fun little romp. I like it. Um, I've heard he's gotten pretty bad lately. Like, his writing is just awful, but this was fun. It's cute. Um, Jurassic Park and Lost World by Michael Crichton. Deception Point by Dan Brown. That should be over here. Uh, so... This is like some Holocaust literature here. Uh, the Book Thief, Plot Against America, Night, uh, Trapped in Hitler's Hell, Survival in Auschwitz. Another copy of Paradise Lost is here. There's a copy of Gautier that's actually in uh, German. So, you know, one of these days when I finish learning German. Uh, this is like an illustrated, great illustrated classic, Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. It ain't bad. These are some fun books I got as gifts. Um, they're like bathroom readers. So they're, they're just like these, it's like a reader's digest, basically just these like little short articles that you could read while you're in the bathroom. Um, sloppy seconds. This was so huge for my generation. The, uh, the Tucker Max books. That was the third one he did. Um, my God, when my mother saw me, found me reading, uh, the first one, just so disgusted. It was awesome. Uh, just like a magic trick book here. Uh, yeah, so this is like, guys are waffles, girls are spaghetti, uh, you know, like, Sudoku puzzles, it's like a, you know, like a thing somebody brought me back from Germany, uh, these are some Harry Potter books in Spanish, whoops, oh gosh, I lost the thing, I'm gonna have to readjust this in a second, okay, and then finally, here's the Memory of Light and Hardcover, which I talked about before, so that's the last Wheel of Time book, The Voyage of the Journal Shana Har uh, Shannara, by Terry Books. I read this um, 
there's a funny story about how I read this. But basically, I read this very like I think two days uh, when I was younger. Uh, and then George R. R. Martin's Fire and Blood, which uh, unfortunately he said Volume Two is not going to come out before he finishes the Song of Ice and Fire, which means uh, we're never going to get Volume Two, unfortunately. But I really like Fire and Blood. Okay. So the thing that I'm using to kind of like stabilize uh, my phone is uh, slipping, so I need to fix that, and then we're going to go and look at some hardcovers. Okay, just real quick, this is on the uh, top of the bookshelf on the right. These are like Hall of Fame books for me, so I've got a nice copy of the Lord of the Rings trilogy from J.R.R. Tolkien with uh, Alan Lee's illustrations. Uh, hardcover copy of Dune, uh, Les Miserables, which is... Yeah, I feel pretty safe right now, though, and since I haven't since I haven't read War and Freeze proper, apparently, I would say that safely this is my favorite of the classic literature of the 19th century. But, I don't know, I'm rereading Anna Karenina and super enjoying it. This may change. This is a folio cop, folio poets version of Tennessee. This is, uh, like a nice coffee. And uh, Alfred Lord Tennessee is my favorite poet, period. So uh, I have him up there. There's, like, illustrations and stuff in there. Then we've got The Rights of Man, which has tons of illustrations uh, as well. So that's why I have it up there. It's very pretty. And then War Through the Ages was probably the first ever history book I fell in love with in my life, which is a, just a kind of a broad military history, um, not of the world, but a, a history of just war um, and how it's conducted uh, going up through to the Korean War. Real good stuff. Okay, so this is to the left, or excuse me, to the right. This used to be, I think my parents used to use this for uh, holding shoes, and now I just use it for hardcovers that are too big to put on the regular shelves. So we've got some Harold Bloom here, kind of a controversial writer, but we've got his How to Read and Why, the Western, uh, the Western Canon, the complete works of William Shakespeare, which is related to his book, Shakespeare, The Invention of the Human. Got a trilogy of Shostakovich-related stuff here. Symphony for the City of the Dead by Anderson, which is really good. Uh, his Testimony, which may or may not be true. And then a casebook, which is actually really complicated. Then there's a couple of uh, these massive books. One on uh, D-Day and one on the Battle of the Bulge, really the whole campaign there. Uh, so, some thick boys. Then we've got... Um, these are kind of just all miscellaneous, but I try to I put them in uh, chronological order. Again, it's because they just don't fit on the regular shelf. So, Warfare in the Classical Age, The Quest for El Cid, which actually has a digression where it talks about Scandinavian history for a little bit during that time, which is, you know, it's interesting. Medieval Europe Short History, David Startsky's, who you may know from the Monarchy series. This is his Six Wives of uh, Henry VIII. Very pretty book. Uh, a biography of Lucrezia Borgia by Sarah Bradford. Apparently she had like a really well-received um, book on uh, um, Jackie O, JFK's wife, but uh, I've not read that. How the Scots Invented the Modern World, another kind of famous pop history one. Okay, we're in the center cube now because you can see there's nine. Center cube, Roots by Alex Haley, French Revolution. This one has it ending in 1804. Eric Kazan's A People's History of the French Revolution. Um... With Eagles to Glory by uh, John H. Gill. Uh, this is uh, specifically uh, Napoleon, as it says here, Napoleon and his German M uh, allies in the 1809 campaign. So a very focused book. Soul by Soul by uh, Walter Johnson, I think his name is, uh, which is about uh, how slavery really worked in, uh, in the South in the United States. Um, War of the Thousand Deserts. I think this was, was this by a local... I think this was done by an El Paso publisher. No, no, this is Yale. Never mind. Oh, yeah, because Yale books are always so tall. I can never fit them. Uh, but this is just about warfare in the, like, basically the war between uh, the Native Americans and uh, against the Mexicans and the uh, United States in the 19th century, especially the first half of the 19th century. Very, like, well researched work. Um, amazingly so. Uh, this Republic of Suffering, this is a book that got so much, uh, so many people were talking about it when it first came out by Drew Gilpin Faust, who now is the president of Harbor. But this is, uh, this is about uh, specifically how death uh, affected American society uh, during and after the, uh, the U.S. Civil War. 
Sleepwalkers by Christopher Clark. This is the same guy who did Iron Kingdom. How Europe went to war in 1914. The, the year 1919, the year our, war bega- our world began by William Klingemann. Culture of Defeat by Wolfgang uh, Schiffelbusch. This is uh, kind of another looking at a concept in history. So this studies three societies that were defeated and how the, in war and how they reacted. So it's like the American South, France after the Franco-Prussian War, and then Germany after World War One. Forgotten Ally, which is uh, the world is World War Two through the eyes of China. Uh, the Vichy Syndrome: History and Memory in France. It's 1944 by Rousseau, uh, which kind of it talks about the con- the conflicted legacy of how the French see themselves and their role in World War Two, um, and the controversies around that. Really, really niche history. Uh, Eisenhower in Latin America: Self-explanatory. First They Killed My Father. This is another Cambodian history book. In From the Cold, which is about Cold War, Latin America. The Burning Season. This is more an environmental history here about um, about uh, uh, the burning of the Amazon and um, uh, but like in the 80s and the early 90s. Brazil, which is about Brazil. Okay. Then over here, this is a real mishmash. Um, I've got some of the Encyclopedia Britannica great books here. So I've got the, uh, like, Epictetus and Marcus Aurelius and the, and, uh, uh, Lu, 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 oh God, I don't know how to pronounce his name. The one who wrote On the Nature of Things. That's what that is. Uh, then there's Tacitus' Histories of Rome. And I've got some Marx here, which is, like, bits of Capital. Ancient War, World and Cinema. Um... Robert Heinlein's kind of pseudo autobiography, which is Letters, uh, Grumbles from the Grave. Haven't read this yet again. I'm looking for volume one of that other book before I read them all. Uh, Modern Ireland by R.F. Foster. Radicalism of the American Revolution by Gordon S. Wood. Not the last time we're going to see him. And this is another one I haven't read, but I saw it and I went, well, that's interesting. It's the history of milk. 10,000 uh, year food fracas. And, uh, but David McCulloch praises it on the back. Um, so, or not this one, another book that this guy wrote, but I love milk. Um, so, uh, wow, that's uh, unique and interesting. I'll have to check that out. Okay, moving up. Here's a lot of my cookbooks. Basically all my cookbooks. I like to cook food from all over the world. So I've got like Puerto Rican cookery, uh, ramen noodles here. This is like a, chi- a lot of these are just like chicken. There's like some of these are too thin. I'm not going to pull them out, but it's like just chicken books. I got the unofficial Game of Thrones cookbook. I love to make the vegetables in here. They're really good. Craft beer cookbook. Um, I got my hands on a on a freaking. I swear I've never been on food stamps, but I've got the food stamp cookbook from here in tech. This is this is from like the food bank in San Antonio. Um, good recipes in there. Real good. Crockpot cooking, cake cooking. Although I don't really cook cake anymore these days. Yeah. And then this is just a book of massage for you know after dinner. And then this is the only closest to the R rated books that I own that you guys are gonna see. All right, moving over here into art, we've got Roman art, medieval art, uh, Spanish art. This is the El Paso Museum of Arts book on uh, the European collection they have, complete, which is really really nice. Um, the, the I got this as a gift from them. That was that was very sweet. Uh, complete works of Michelangelo. This is a book on Bernini, my favorite sculptor. Period. Illustrated Encyclopedia of Royal Britain. Uh, which is basically an art book. The 36 Views of Mount Sinai, or excuse me, Mount Fuji by Hokusai. This is the famous wave off of Kagigoshima uh, image that you guys have seen. This is all the other parts of that collection. Um, this is like a, this is, these are like some Irish uh, paintings of uh, World War One landscapes, like the war. Georgia O'Keeffe's here. It's a very nice museum to her in uh, Santa Fe. And then this is just how to make paper airplanes, which I used to do when I was a kid, and I've started doing more to entertain the younger members of my family, like, you know, not nieces and nephews, but, like, second cousins, uh, or first cousins once removed, I should say, and then paper. Then over here we got graphic novels and art and stuff. So we got Persepolis, which uh, I was super happy with these. Uh, These are usually pretty pricey, so I've never had my own copy, but then I saw them somewhere, and they were, like, four bucks each, and I went, are you serious? That's the price? And I went, yeah. I went, okay, let me get that. Uh, Mammoth Book of War Comics, Best War Comics, uh, edited by David Kendall. There's a lot of good stuff in here, like Vietnam, the, Vol- the, the, the Falkland Wars, World War II, um, so many different art styles. 
some funny, some gruesome, some dramatic, some all sorts of stuff. This is a really interesting collection. I got that one as a gift as well. Speaking of gifts, the Manhattan Projects by Hickman and also uh, Pitaria. But this is um, about the uh, the A-bomb development during World War II, but it's in a fantasy sci-fi setting kind of thing. It gets so weird. Uh, I love this series. Love it, love it. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff in here. Like you can kind of pause and look at them. Um, I got some Wonder Woman stuff that I'm loaning out right now. Pax Romana in here is just by Hickman. It is so good. It's a single volume work. Um, basically, this is a I'll, I'll, uh, this is a, a time travel story where the Catholic Church sends people back to try to make the Catholic Church's roots even stronger, so it'll stay powerful going into the modern age. And it gets so wild. It's it's freaking amazing. Uh, I've got three. I don't have a copy of 300 myself yet. I want to get one, but 3 was written in response, basically, to uh, 300. Uh, and it's much, 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 much more historically accurate and a good story, too. But I like 300 also. Watchmen, Book Love. These are just cute comics about loving books. A couple of Miyazaki things and the Simpsons Uncensored Family Album. Okay, we're almost done here. Let's go look at some hardcovers. Okay, so this is a brand new bookshelf that I have. Um which is uh, I literally got for free because it was on the side of the road and I knocked on the door. I said, you giving that away? And you go, yeah. So it's mine now uh, and it matches the other last bookshelf that we'll see. So right now I haven't quite decided what to put on here. So I just put a bunch of more stuff that uh, couldn't fit anywhere else. Um, but we've got, hold on. We've got um, Citizens by Simon Shema. These, these are basically all authors or series that I really, really like. So we've got Citizens by Simon Shema, Europe by Norman Davis, and The Isles. Um, this is this is John Julius Norwich's book on the Popes. Uh, then we've got the Candace Millard uh, trilogy. Uh, they're not related to one another, but the three books that she's written so far, uh, River of Doubt, Hero of the Empire, and Destiny of the Republic. Then uh, a couple of um, Barbara Tuckman books. Uh, Distant Mirror and March of Folly. And um, these are books that like, I would really, they each need to have their own video or I'd talk about them all day long. Then we've got the Oxford History of the United States. These are all the ones that I own. So this basically covers American Revolution, the early Republic, the early 19th century Republic. Um, Battle Cry of Freedom is, of course, extremely famous. That's the Civil War era. And then uh, Freedom from Fear, which is the Great Depression and World War II. I'm wanting to get the Republic of Suffering. That's one of the books I'm going to get next month. All right, and then underneath is where I put books that are just way, way too freaking big to fit anywhere else, especially on the right there. So this is like a book that talks about all the various wonders of the world, is like in great photographs of them as well. Majesty of Spain, which is uh, basically this is art from the Prado Museum. I haven't been, but they did an exhibition here, in, well, not here in El Paso, it was in Las Cruces. Because El Paso doesn't have culture. Uh, I've got volumes one and two of Simon Shema's History of Britain. Very thick books. Uh, the Civil War. Uh, just in a, like an illustrated history. And uh, you know a lot of primary source stuff in there. A lot of, But it's mostly the big pictures. That's why it's so big. Encyclopedia of World War II. History of U.S. military operations since World War II. The Decline and Fall of the Third Reich, obviously a huge book. And then I just got here some like PDF books that I just printed out. So this is mostly Marx, but uh, I've got, you know, some stuff on the, the French directory uh, during, and whatnot there. But And then uh, I think this is, in fact, the biggest mood, uh, book I own, Egypt During the Age of the Pharaohs, which is completely enormous. So, <laughs> yeah, none of these books will fit anywhere else but here. Okay, so here we've got, um, this actually is my grandmother's old um, bookshelf. Uh, and so this is where I put the, and it, and it matches the other one, this is where I put only the finest of books. So top shelf here, we've got uh, the Barnes & Noble's classics editions of the Iliad and the Odyssey, the Divine Comedy, and then Abraham Lincoln Selected Writings. Obviously it's not everything, but it's a pretty goddamn good collection. Uh, the Great Books, these are the Encyclopedia Britannica things, uh, books one and two, this is like an index, these are just a couple of uh, one piece bits of art that I don't know where to put yet. Uh, 
But this is something that used to belong to my grandmother, the Book of Knowledge. And it's like 7,000 plus pages total, just covering all sorts of different uh, things. Like there's poetry, there's how to do art, there's how to do practical things, like reflections on the law, um, events in history, short stories, just just so much between all of these books. Like, like it's one of those things that like, you know, in reality, I probably never need to buy a book again because I have these to keep me entertained. But uh, and yet I keep doing it because I kind of fucking need <laughs> uh, But they're absolutely incredible. Okay, coming down here. Now, I eventually want to turn these two shelves into just hardcover biographies. But I don't have that many biographies yet, so it's cool. So right now I kind of use this mostly as a reference section. So I've got Asimov's Chronology of the World. Yes, that Isaac Asimov. So these are books that, like, I can pull out, pull out and, like, reference something in the middle. Rebecca Fraser's Story of Britain and the Campaigns of Napoleon by David Chandler. Uh, I used to check both of these out of the library so much over the years. They're two of my favorite history books ever. And um, eventually I thought I probably should just buy my own copy and save the gas. <laughs> uh, there's Ordeal by Fire, Civil War and Reconstruction by um, by uh, uh, James McPherson. Yes, he did do Battle for Cry of Freedom, but I think he did this later so he could focus more on the before and after the Civil War eras. There's Hugh Strachan's uh, The First World War. We've got A People's Tragedy by Orlando Figgs. I've got two... Histories of the uh, Second World War, these came out within like a year of each other. Max Hastings' Inferno and uh, Andrew Roberts' The Storm of War. They both got their strengths, both got their weaknesses. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah, just keep them both on the shelf. Martin Gilbert's History of the Righteous Among the Nations, which is uh, these are the people who helped save lives during, uh, you, know, you know, during the Holocaust and whatnot. And then I got a couple copies of the Butlerian Jihad here, uh, hardcover books. I got the Machine Crusade and Battle of Corin, but I don't have the Butlerian Jihad itself yet, so I need to keep an eye out for that. Okay, moving down here, we've got a bunch of biographies. There's the, uh, see, I told you Tremont would come back. We've got his biography on Isabel, uh, Isabella of Castile, Rob Cherno. We have Alexander Hamilton and Washington. Then Mike Duncan's new book. Hero of Two Worlds, which is about Lafayette. So Washington should probably chronologically come before, because this is in chronological order mostly, um, should come before Hamilton, but he wrote Hamilton first, and plus I think Washington would like to be between his two beautiful, handsome boys, Alexander Hamilton and Lafayette. His beautiful sons uh, are there, comforting, you know, around him, giving him a book hug. Anyway, then we've got Danton, uh, A Life, Napoleon Bonaparte. I don't have the Andrew Roberts one. The prices need to come down, damn it, and then I'll get it. Uh, John Edward Smith's um, biography on John Marshall, who was not the first Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, but probably the first most influential one. John Quincy Adams' bio. H.W. Brands appears again, kind of like a triple pseudo-biography of Henry Clay, Daniel Webster, and uh, John Calhoun. David Blight's... Um, Biography on Frederick Douglass, which of course won awards. Um, check out his his uh, his lecture series on the Civil War. I highly recommend it. And he talks about Douglass all the time in that series. And as soon as I heard that he was gonna have he was gonna he had a um, biography on Douglass, and it's like oh it was winning like the Pulitzer Prize. It's like well of course it did. He's the Douglass guy. Anyway, uh, now we have Samuel Chase uh, Samuel P Chase. Uh, so this is like the series of uh, Lincoln's aides, I guess you could say. Um, his sidekicks We've got Sam and Chase, Seward, Stanton, and Grant. And you're probably saying, well, "Where's Lincoln?" I'm actually reading a biography of Lincoln right now, but um, I kind of want to do some stuff with Lincoln. I'll talk about later. It's going to be its, its own section. We're talking about it in another video. Have the last book Edmund Morris wrote before he died, Edison, um, meaning Thomas Edison, and then Khrushchev and his era by William Taubman. So those are all the hardcover biographies I have, but I'd like both of these shelves to be that eventually. Okay, hi, we're back. Uh, sorry for the sudden jump cut. Basically, the, the video footage got messed up on this section. So uh, we're here at the bottom of this, uh, uh, you know, behind the, the doors under my uh, biography section. Also, my cat Caesar is here. Caesar, how are you doing? He's sniffing at the at the rug. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so 
this is another mishmash section mostly of books that just couldn't fit elsewhere so it's mostly coffee table books so we'll start down here on the right we've got uh all of my jeffrey ward slash ken burns um books so these are all pretty pretty darn large so this is the only place they'll really fit and i don't actually want to put them in that new bookshelf i've got because it is on wheels maybe if i can figure a way to take off the wheels but i don't really want to do that but i, I think it's too heavy and it'll end up bowing the bottom so they stay here but uh the ones that i have are the civil war the war which is america and world war ii the vietnam war my personal favorite documentary of his by the way jazz uh the, the roosevelt's and his biography of mark twain all right and then in the middle here these are actually just children's books so it's like mother goose magic school bus really informative uh really uh the answer which is uh a book retelling of the episode of the answer from steven universe uh but it's kind of it's kind of meta it's a cute book uh then we've got turtle watch uh okay so over here more coffee table books down here this is a book i picked up in dallas it's charles lebrun first painter to king louis the 14th so that's a book about him you've got battle commanders history of the american guitar uh so it's like its evolution as a, you know different designs have been built over the over the decades um Vietnam War Diary, edited by Chris Bishop, an illustrated history of the Vietnam War, Atlas of Ancient Egypt. This is super in depth. Apparently, this Baines and Malek. This is like a series they do of atlases um, from various uh, ancient civilizations. I I'll have to keep an eye out for these in thrift stores though, because this one's very good. So if the others are good, I'll have to check them out. Book of Dinosaurs, really old, so you can see like. The spines falling off and stuff. Uh, World War II chronological axis. This is a Beatles songbook. Um, then there's the beer section. You guys already saw my beer cookbook. Uh, so this is just about beers. 300 beers to try before you die. Uh, tasting beer. And I got the mandolin for dummies. All right, now up here in the top left, let's ignore these two for a second. Just Just talk about this part to the left. So this is the cartoon history of the United States and the cartoon histories of the universe slash modern world. These five books here are unironically um, one of my favorite world history series books. They're really funny. Um, they're done by this guy called Larry Gonick. And as you can see, they're all really worn. Cartoon History of the Universe Part 3 looks the best because I've replaced it. Um, same thing with Modern World. So that's why they're the least worn down. But I always get a good laugh out of them. And I picked these two up in, uh, I think I picked these up on Thrift Books because I'd heard he did other work. Uh, so it's Cartoon Guide to the Environment, Cartoon Guide to Hyper Capitalism, which is about economics. Um, these were like apparently collaborations he did. So he, I don't think he wrote them. He just drew them. Uh, so they're a little, they're a little different from, from the main series, but Cartoon History of the Universe, it's hilarious. 50 Battles That Changed the World. Um... Praetorians, this is just a strategy guide. Um, let's see, Byzantium. So this is like part of a series called Great Ages of Man. This is the only one I have, though. Uh, here's Hegel's Philosophy of Right. Very tall, thin version for some reason. Uh, this is a, was a, something I used as a textbook for a government class where we were studying... Um, we were comparing the governments of uh, and evolutions of the governments of the United Kingdom. It was uh, it, it was the United Kingdom, uh, France, Japan, and Peru. Pretty interesting stuff. Also, some funny things in there. Uh, then we got some more. These are like just kind of gimmicky coffee table. No, nah, well, not as big as a coffee table book, but you know, there's like complete history of the mafia, conspiracy, imperfect presidents. So that's what those are. That's kind of like the stuff you see in those uh, display sections at um, Barnes and Nobles, like that style book. Uh, this is a biography of Jop. Um, there's no good Jop biographies out there, as far as I'm aware. But this one's I picked this one up because it's got interviews with him by this this uh, guy who was a brigadier general. It's not great. 
Um, I'll just have to write one myself. This is Pol Pot, Anatomy of a Nightmare. I don't have this on the shelf of above because I actually haven't read it yet. Uh, so I didn't want to have it on display. This one probably could be up there. This is Reve. This is actually a signed copy. Um, so this is about a really influential 20th century rabbi. I don't want to get into it right now, but this is a signed copy, so that's cool. I've got the Omnibus of Science Fiction. This is just tons of science fiction short stories from the mid-20th century. 1001 Beers You Must Taste Before You Die. Uh, this is Jimi Hendrix's Starting at Zero, which is basically an autobiography because, yeah, it's his own words. It's letters and stuff. Uh, then the Universal Tone, uh, this is the guy who made me want to first play guitar, uh, learn to play the guitar. It's Carlos Santana's autobiography. Um, over here is Napoleon and the Art of Diplomacy. This is a really special book to me because of who I got it from. Uh, probably should just be in a different section. Speaking of being in a different section, I need to move this over there with the classics. Uh, Herodotus and C. McQuinn's. Uh, first Great Historians of Greece and China. That's a pretty good one. Uh, this is the Life Magazine Illustrated History of the War in Iraq. A lot of cool pictures in there. Um, also covers a bit of the First War, the Gulf War. Uh, and then next to it, we've got uh, other great, really important uh, news agency, The Onion, uh, <laughs> our dumb sentry. So it's just, uh, it, this is, uh, it's actually really detailed, but it's very funny. Like, Kennedy slain by CIA, Mafia, Castro, LBJ, Teamsters, free instance. President shot 129 times from 43 different angles, but there's all sorts of stuff in there. It's pretty funny. This was, uh, yeah, Echoes and Reflection. This is, uh, this is like a resource guide for teaching about the Holocaust. And then over here in the corner, let me get it. We've got, uh, uh, yeah, a book from the, um, El Paso Holocaust Museum where I used to be a docent. Uh, okay. So, there. I think that's everything in here. So, I'll just need to splice this in with the rest. So, this is just what I'm reading now um, on my desk that I read at, uh, which is, you know, a little messy right now. Uh, but the main four that I'm reading, so they're not on the shelves, I'm reading The Pop. I'm juggling between The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, Men on Horseback, The Power of Charisma in the Age of Revolution by David A. Bell. I had never heard of this book until it got given to me by a friend recently. It's so damn good. And I'm reading uh, David Herbert Donald's Biography of Lincoln. This is just a coaster. It's Mexican Mona Lisa. Somebody gave this to me there. If you want to look out there, Etsy, it's Candy Mayer. She, does, she has cool art if you're into this. She's got a lot of good art. But yeah, it's like, this is where I'll rest the books. Uh, you know, I just got like some other stuff. Like I got, you know, for listening to music and um, some other pair of glasses of mine. And, you know, I got for taking notes because I annotate more and more as I get older. So there's that. And then uh, I guess technically there's one more thing. Okay, and then finally, I'm not going to pull them all out, but I have a lot of books that are in my closet. And they're they're like kind of tucked in a shelf. And I mostly use them for reference. But... I do have all of the story of civilization. I reference these books constantly, uh, but I just keep them in there. And I just pull them out when I need to reference something, put them back. So this is just one of them, but I have the entire set, and they're all of this quality. I have The Lessons of History by Will and Ariel Durant. This is actually a first edition, I think. And I have the third and fourth Stormlight Archive book. The fourth one's actually signed. Um, and so I keep those in the closet, too. Again, they're so big, not really anywhere else to put them. And uh, then these are two books that I keep by my nightstand. Um, so I've got Epictetus's The Art of Living. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this translation, but keep that on the nightstand. And the one, the only, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. These two never get shelved. They always stay by bed. Um, so, wow. Uh, I've been, obviously, this, I'm going to have to edit all this together. But, geez, I wonder how long this video is going to be, if it's going to be like an hour and a half, but... I hope you guys liked it, and please, again, tell me which books you want me to elaborate on, do videos on in the future, and then maybe, I don't know, maybe we could do this once a year, see how my library grows and evolves and such, but um, I am Voyages in Time. Please, please subscribe if you have not already, and let's get on the road to a community tab, 1,000 subscribers, uh, and I will see you all around. Bye.